First, I'd like to say, as a forensic nurse, and that is my area of specialty, we have, as a profession, come a long way in the last 20 years. But unfortunately, we still have quite a long way to go. The way I see biases play out um, in emergency departments, for example, is language that's used. When I trained uh, nurses and doctors, and even when I was trained to document uh, the medical record, we were trained to be objective. So, for example, we didn't use words like alleged or rule out. Now, those words are very commonly used in the emergency department. You come in with abdominal pain, they're going to rule out appendicitis. When a person, woman most of the time, comes to the emergency room and has the courage to disclose that they have been raped or sexually assaulted, or that their body was touched in some manner without their permission, or even that they think they might have been touched, in some men without their uh, permission, what healthcare providers have to remember to do is it is not up to us to draw a conclusion as to whether something did or did not happen. It is our role to document objectively what the patient tells us, to document objectively what we see, and if we go on to court and testify, and if we are asked to give an opinion, our opinion should be based on if what we saw is consistent with what the patient says. I would never, ever say in a court of law or to a police officer or to anyone, yes, the patient was raped. Because I don't know. Rape is not, first of all, a medical term. It's a legal term. And the only person who can say are the finest of facts, and in the courtroom that's either the judge or the jury. But what I can say is these are the findings that I've documented. Sometimes I can call them injuries. Sometimes I have to call them findings. Because all I know is this is what I found when I examined her. I can't always even say if what I found is an injury. I can just say it's there. And is it consistent with what she said happened? Yes. But could it be consistent with something else? Yes. So we have to be a lot more objective. We should never use uh, terms that are frequently used in ERs like AOB. Those are the initials for alcohol on breath. And I would never write that because most of the time, well, 100% of the times, I haven't seen that patient take a drink. I don't know that that's alcohol on her breath. Someone can come in who has a history of diabetes and their blood sugar can be so out of whack that they can smell like they're intoxicated on rum. But it's a medical reason causing that odor. So I can't say it's alcohol on breath. So the more, the more objective way to document that would be to ask the patient, do you remember what you had to drink, how much it was, and over what period of time? So instead of writing she was drunk, I may write that her speech was slurred, and that's what I saw. That she had nystagmus, meaning her eyeballs were sort of going back and forth. That she had difficulty staying awake when I talked to her. And that she stated she drank four 40 ounce bottles of old English beer between the hours of 8 p.m. and 12 midnight. Now, that's a much more objective way to document, as opposed to saying the patient appears drunk. What does that mean? That's me placing a value on her. Now, I'd like to be able to tell you that with the training, with all these fancy forensic programs we have around the country, and especially New York City, that those, um, those um, subjective uh, ways of documenting no longer occur, but that would not be true. Unfortunately, people, doctors, nurses, healthcare providers are still using the wrong terms and the wrong language. Um, and, and how does this, you know, the fact that this may happen, what's the end result? I mean, how can this be damaging? Well, what we know based on research is, first of all, it takes a lot of courage to come forward and disclose a rape or sexual assault to anyone, be it a best friend, be it a family member, be it law enforcement, or be it a physician or someone you trust. And what we know based on research is if the first one or two people that you talk to about this are not compassionate, and especially if they act like they don't believe you, then you are less likely to tell anyone else. That stands for children as well as adults. And so if first responders, be it the patrol officer in uniform, the person that's in the ambulance, or the nurse that takes the story in the triage area of the ER, if they have a preconceived notion or a bias or treat you in a certain way, that can totally shut the person down. And unfortunately, it can delay proper medical care and it can most adversely affect criminal justice. And then we know if criminal justice is affected, then perpetrators are not held accountable. Yeah, I think you were giving me uh, an example. You know, if someone writes down um, no, uh, you know, acute, acute distress not evident or something. Yeah. 
Another very common term that you'll see in the emergency room um, record would be NAD. That means no acute distress. Now, when a healthcare person writes that, that means that their blood pressure is normal, they don't have a fever, their breathing is easy, their color is good. That means their, their vital signs are not distressed. A lay jury, when they read no acute distress on the medical record, they think she wasn't upset. So if she wasn't upset, how could she have been raped? Because people have their own preconceived notion about what a person looks like after they've been raped or sexually assaulted. So we have to be very careful what we write. And I always train nurses, but especially doctors. You must document that medical record objectively, but you write that note as if your grandmother or your 12-year-old child is going to read it. Don't assume that the people in the jury know medical terms, you know? If the bruise on her arm is round and the size of a quarter and purple in color, then it's okay to write. Purple round area the size of a quarter on the arm, as opposed to a three centimeter ecumatic area on the right upper forearm. What does that mean to the jury? It means a lot to me, because I know what ecumosis is. But how many of you out there know what it is or even know how to spell it? You see what I mean? So you have to be really careful what you write.